just packed with action. There are tons of great sequences, uh, some of which I, I'm really excited to see. By the way, we have two huge fights, two set pieces at the beginning and at the end. But in the rest of the movie, there's such incredible action all the way through. The approach that Alex wanted to do on this one was actually to do a lot of, let's say, motion capture, a version of motion capture, where all the fights were pre-choreographed, captured, and pre vised So their approach to how they were going to shoot it, because it's a very complicated film. There was no storyboards on this movie. It's all pre vis So sort of previews takes the place that storyboards used to. As they're using the, the previews, they're cutting the previews in with what they've already shot to sort of complete the scenes, help them work out what shots they're doing and also helps us see that, okay, well they need that little bit and that's gonna involve a rig from us. And action. Because of the, the size of the gods and we have humans, so you've got the god size, which is, uh, it was a great discussion in itself to well, try to work out what size God's going to be and what size humans were going to be. So they had to look at all that through their, through their motion capture and performance of the fight work and such. So at the time I wasn't available to actually begin with Alex to start all that process. But I had a, a gentleman, Tim Wong, who I'd worked with on another film for a number of years. First and foremost, I think my first conversation with Alex was that he wanted for me to help design a fighting style or characteristics for the um, the lead characters in the film. How Set, Horace and Beck, how they would move differently and how visually their kind of fighting style would be different. Action! So what Tim did in early days was put together the fights and choreograph the fights and go through the whole motion capture process. And cut there. And that was the first step before we even started shooting and that happened months prior to the beginning of shoot. And action! There are a lot of fight sequences and, and, and they're quite complicated. Glenn and the whole team and my stunt doubles, uh, Steve Davis, they, they were just, I mean, they've done so many massive films the most of I mean most of the crew came from they just done Mad Max and they've done Lord of the Rings before I mean they so you, that was the level of you know the quality of, of, of these people when well, we've been at this now for two, two and a half months straight training and I've done a lot of my training with Nikolai which is hard because we're both filming so you you know we did a lot before we started filming we always get time together to develop that develop that understanding and trust I mean try, try and hit me a little bit Okay, that's fine. Is that hard? No, it's great. It's wonderful. And, and that thing where you just start to know each other and you do the moves and you hurt each other and you learn that, okay, he's not out to... You know, but I'm always hitting <laughs> him. He's like, ooh, that was good. And then yesterday he had to whack me in the back. He's like, right, here we go. <laughs> it's like, here we go. Bang! By the time we got the actors, we knew which weapons they were fighting with. And, you know, earlier on, we'd kind of worked out their fighting style and what their techniques were going to be so we could concentrate when they actually got here on actual specifics. You know, one of, one of the great things about the stunts in this movie is nobody knows how they fought in Egypt. The, the stunt guys tell me that they pay homage to some traditional type of Egyptian um, stick fighting that they had and I forget the name of it but I, I don't quite know where that fits in. But because we don't know, you say, what's going to look amazing? <laughs> All the lead actors got along well with the stunt guys, got along with the, their stunt doubles, got along with Tim, they were easy to deal with. And what was really important for us with our actors is that if they have this confidence, feel comfortable with the stunt department, then they have more that, well to me they feel like they have more of an input, especially because, I mean a fight's a fight, but if you've got a character the characterizes their moves in a fight, it makes a fight so much different. After I've done this, whoa, I'll go like this. Walk off like that. So you can put your own interpretation in your cheeky little moments, because I really wanted, you know, sets. This is one of the great things about playing a villain. He's such a bad boy. So when he's fighting, I love it, you know? I looked up to you. Of course you did. <laughs> So 
up. I was finding all little tricks that I could do. It's like, yeah, yeah, come on, let's go, you know? Catching it, whoop, poof, let's go. Spinning it, I had the spin that I do with my arm out, which again was hard because the thing's so heavy. But as I walked past him, I managed to do a whole spin in one hand with a seven foot long, uh, no, a six foot long that my, uh, my scepter. Spin it around and catch it just after I've hit him. There's so many cheeky moves, there's a lot of personality in the fights. The fights were fairly complicated and because there was integrated wire work in this fight work, we had to do a lot of it in sections. And drop! And a lot of wire work, you know, because we're gods. They were really keen. They wanted to be involved, they wanted to fly, they wanted to do as much of the action as they possibly could. We wanted that to happen. So the guys actually physically were physically capable and had enough coordination with themselves to make our wire work so much easier. They had to do leaps, they had to do falls, they had to, they had to fight the, on wire works, they had to get pulled back out of shot on wire. And the actors did an excellent, excellent job. And I think that was just testament to how keen they were in getting it done and, and their physical uh, ability. So pretty much, um Brinton's going to pretty much go off of your timing for the kill, so rip his legs out like we talked about, walk over, smash him in the chest, okay? This smash him in the chest. So well rehearsed. Yeah. This, well, this. well, we're going to rehearse soon. Smash him in the chest, step the left foot up, and I think that's when you might do your line. You're still no match for me. You're still no match for me. Right. You're still no match for me. Yeah. At, at a stroke, you're still no match for me. Nikolai replies with, uh, you're right, I'm just the bait. Can I say when you say, I'm just the bait, I'm going to say, I don't know what that actually means, but I'm just going to go ahead and kill you anyway. That's great. Okay. You have to go stab him. And as you're coming down, basically, Brenton's going to take your timing. Okay. We've got Ryan there in blue, who's going to hold the spear, so you can let go, turn to see Brenton, and then start your transformation before you fly up. Oh yeah, that fly. I yeah. have worked on the fly. Have you done that? I've done that, yeah. That's, um, good, if, good if we can see one of those on this rehearsal. I'll, I'll show you oh, I'll show you one. I just need to get the feathers. <laughs> I've now been sword fighting for nine days straight. There was supposed to be a five day sword fight and a five day sword fight and they put them both together. And yesterday, we just finished five days of a crazy opening sword fight in the coronation. Like non-stop, every kind of spin, kick, you know, smashing in the walls. And, you, and we're talking 12, 14 hour days of doing this. And then they said, right, you're going into the next one. And the day before they start, this sword fight was already hard. You're spinning backwards and you're swinging this thing. And they went, that's where you're doing it. And we're doing it on stairs that are so steep that when you walk down those stairs, you're literally like, watch where you're going. Because they don't, if size 11 doesn't even fit on it. And now I'm having to go, boom, boom, spin back, spin round, step down. And there's marks, but you can't look at the marks and you're falling all the time. I had to have my ankle strapped. And then I have you know, an eye patch for most of the movie. Um, and you know that thing when you, if you hold one hand over the eye and then you reach for something, you kind of miss it. We did have one special patch made for the fight sequences where there's a little tiny little bit of netting so I could see a little bit, tiny little bit. But that was very important because if not I would have stabbed someone to death long ago. This this end fight should really be something pretty spectacular. And then and then like I said, then you look at the the backdrop, like you even just see one still and you're like, this is this is so stunning. So I think that's shaping up to be to be pretty powerful. We have a lot of confidence with Brenton when he has to do his work, so we'll give him more to do. Brenton was probably one of the most athletic young guys that you know, I've kind of ever had to kind of deal with. Um, he, I think he had a quiet confidence that he knew that he could kind of deliver it on the day, and so over-rehearsing was never going to, you know, he didn't, he didn't really ever, ever want to really over-rehearse much. We talked about having kind of like a parkour nature about the character, that he's always quick on his feet and he can scale buildings and get away, get out of situations and things like that. And I had a great stunt double, Blake Linzel, who was the best parkour man in the world. And so he would, you know, work with me on certain things and certain roles. We would go over stunt sequences weeks in advance, so I would feel comfortable at the time. You know, you might get some actors who, are, who want to rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it, whereas Brenton, he kind of gave it a couple of times and be like, yeah, okay, now I'm good. 
you know, I'm good. <laughs> we would build these quite challenging parkour type kind of leaping and bounding and grabbing and swinging kind of obstacle courses for him. And he would kind of do it a couple of times and be like, okay, yeah, I'm good, you know. And we were like, okay, we actually plan to do this for a good hour. And he'd kind of like 15 minutes, kind of he was done. So, no, I just meant that we'd have to kind of think of other things for him to kind of do and make, make, keep him busy and things like that. But that, that's what I mean. But without, when you first kind of met him, you're like, okay, well, I hope you can. But then when we did start shooting, you're like, yeah, it's fine. He's, he's got this. Yeah, he, yeah, he's got it. Yeah, totally. Working with Alex before, his mind and the way it works with live action and the CG world and the way he can mix it and blend it makes it a more real feeling. It's not like all of a sudden, uh, live action and uh, now CG. He, just the way he actually ties it together is really interesting and I think he's got a great brain for that. Well, what do you do with the eyes? There, um, in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I still feel it went amazingly well. While there were challenges, the actors totally stepped up for this film. Their training that they'd done had all helped and things like that. They were able to make those small adjustments that I would always throw at them. You know? So to piece that all together and make it work, you know, I think that's probably something that yeah, I can't wait to kind of see it. Yeah. <laughs>